I'm sure glad the stone axe doesn't use as much stamina as it used to. Did that get his attention? No, it doesn't seem to. Maybe that's my, uh, my ninja skills working for me here to keep me alive. <laughs>Welcome back, everybody, to 7 Days to Die on Alpha 18. We are playing this game on insane difficulty, nightmare speed. The zombies run all of the time, day and night. And this is episode three. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so it is our first night now. And uh, we are uh, out on a roof here. So what I've done is I've set down uh, a chest. And actually, you know what? I was going to grab that stuff and turn it into Alacream. So let's do that. Um, so I kind of put some of the extra stuff that I don't need to carry around with me all the time <clears throat> in this chest here. And um, freed up some inventory space. And so uh, what we're going to do, um, what my main goal is in this episode, is I want to find a cooking pot. Because um, we took that first point in Master Chef, and uh, now I want to find a cooking pot. Now one of the things, I don't know if I mentioned this in... Uh, you know, the first two episodes. But one of the things they've changed here in Alpha 18 is not all of the POIs are dungeons now. So some of them um, are just normal POIs that you can go into and have fewer zombies or even no zombies at all. And uh, it's possible that this house that we're on top of could be one of those. I really don't know. And we do have Zeke's, you know, kind of walking around too. Almost sounds like that guy spotted us, maybe because of our light or something. I don't know. Uh, but we need a cooking pot. Uh, very important that we get one of those. So that's kind of going to be our main goal uh, for this episode. I still have, I still like to kind of uncover a little bit more of the town. There's a little area up here and maybe a little bit over here too before we decide upon our actual permanent location. Uh, so that's pretty much what we're going to do. I need to get some stone too because my stone axe is broken. And I want to start making some, I want to start making some wood spikes because we're going to have to put those to use. And I want to start making some uh, barbed wire. Hopefully we can make barbed wire uh, just from iron like we used to be able to do without anything special. Barbed wire fence. Ooh, so it looks like maybe they removed just the normal barbed wire. And, um, and now we have to do the fence. Hmm, okay. That kind of sucks, because I, I used to like to make just the normal, you know, flat panel barbed wire, because it was really good for, like, blocking doorways and stuff. Um, I don't know if these are going to be as effective or not, but it looks like that's really our only option anyways. So I guess we'll, yeah, I guess we'll make some of this up once we obtain some more iron, and uh, we'll see how those do. I never really used those, uh, at least not for that purpose, so we'll see how, how they do. Uh, spikes are still definitely useful. I mean, I was using them a little bit in, in, um, on the multiplayer game. And, um, so, you know, those are still useful for sure. Uh, the problem I'm having now, though, is I don't have room for all this stuff on my toolbar. So let's, um, I guess we'll put the pick there because we've got to get some stone and repair our axe before we do anything else because we're going to need that axe, of course. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to... I, I'm gonna not try not to use the torch too much because it, you know, makes me a lot more visible. Uh, hopefully the video won't be too terribly dark for you guys. Um, if it is, maybe when I take a look at it in editing, I'll see if I can brighten it up just a little bit with some gamma settings. But uh, yeah, I, we have to be careful of that though because I don't want to just start walking around <clears throat> with the torch because then they'll notice me. Okay. We need to keep frames on our toolbar as well. So it's starting to get a little bit iffy as to what to keep on the toolbar, because I kind of need all of this. I guess we don't really need the spear so much on the toolbar. I mean, you know, we have been using it a little bit, but... All right, so we got a Zeke over there. We got a Zeke there. Let's just... Uh, really careful and really quiet we got to get some stone That's what we got to do I'm gonna leave that block there just kind of as a reference 
Uh, I think we'll just <clears throat> we'll just use nerd pulling to get on this roof because uh, if I do a ladder, then you know they could potentially get up it. Okay, so let's um see if we can get ourselves a little bit of stone so that we can get our axe repaired. There's a zombie right there. Okay, how much noise is this going to make? Yowzers. Uh, I think, yep, that zombie's feral too. So I I said something yesterday, and I think I'm going to retract that statement. <laughs> I said that because we're on Always Run, nighttime doesn't matter. But I don't think that's entirely true because I was seeing this in the multiplayer game too. And it seems like ferals come out at night. I mean, like a lot of ferals. And we do not want to mess with them. Absolutely do not want to mess with them. So nighttime is still definitely more dangerous than daytime is. Um, so, you know, we're going to... That doesn't mean we're not going to go out at night at all, but we just have to be really, really careful. Really mindful of that. Okay. So let's see if we can move away from these Zeeks. Man, they're like all over the place. I did read in the patch notes that the zombies, you know, that they increase the zombie spawns in the wasteland at night. But it kind of seems like they increased it. They increased them all over the place, not just the wasteland. See, they're just, I'm damn near surrounded by them. Right, let's repair that. Yeah, this whole... This whole frickin' house is just surrounded by these guys. Hmm. Okay, well... I'm, I'm trying to decide what the best course of action here is. Can we loot this car without alerting anybody. Okay. okay. Yowzers, that's loud. If you're watching my <clears throat> my stealth meter in the lower left-hand corner, uh, both when I opened the car and when I closed it, it jumped up to like 51. Hopefully that uh, point that we put in Hiding the shadows is working for us. I think it is. Hmm. I don't know, man. I I just don't think it's going to be wise for me to try and do a house in the dark. We, we need to wait till daytime for that. So, which means we're probably not going to be able to get a cooking pot until daytime. So I'm just trying to think what we should do. You know, something too that we could try and do as far as the questing goes is we could try and you know cancel our current clear quest and go back to the trader in the morning and see if he has a uh, you know if, and see if it'll replace it with a dig you know a buried supplies quest because I'm just not ready to try and do a kill quest yet or a clear quest I should say Trying to see if this guy's a feral. Can't really tell. The primitive bow does not give us much of a zoom. Okay, let's move over this way. Can we loot this bag? Uh, that, I think that's too risky. He's too close. He's going to hear it. Yeah, let's. we'll hit that bag later. Since it's right in front of our, <clears throat> our current house, anyway. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's just move away from the zombies and see if we can get into a place where, you know, they're not all over the place and then go from there. If we're not going to uh, do any POIs at nighttime, we have to come up with a 
what I guess you know what we could do is we could explore the rest of this area and maybe see if we could sneak over and explore that area. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be a little bit slow going though because I'm going to stay crouched for a lot of this time. I was thinking about, you know, what build I'm going to do too. Um, I think, you know, if this isn't already obvious, but the thing is, is I hadn't really actually made up my mind about this. But, you know, after giving it some thought, we're, we're definitely going to go for a stealth build. Uh, at least in this first experimental playthrough. Um, and yeah, I know <clears throat> I, I chose that stealth skill yesterday, but at that point in time, like I said, it wasn't really explicitly in my mind that that's what we were going to do, you know. But I think that's what we will actually do. One thing we could do is we could pick some, um, uh, let's pick some goldenrod and maybe even some chrysanthemum because once we do find that uh, cooking pot, we'll be able to start making teas. I really would like to find some more, um, or some closer water, a little closer to the trader than the water works. But I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Hopefully, at some point, we will come across some uh, night vision goggles. So that we can see better in the dark. <clears throat> I don't know, too. I don't know if the fun pimps uh, improved those or not. They were absolutely atrocious in uh, early Alpha 17. I never really bothered to use them again. But the problem with them is they turned everything green, but they didn't really brighten anything up. <laughs> so it was like, it was terrible, man. So you, you still really couldn't see any better. It's just everything was green. So um, I don't know, you know, if they've done anything about that or not. Okay, so we've got... Uh, the town kind of goes over this way a little bit more. But, uh, you know, part of this uh, this first experimental series is really, it's, it's about discovery, you know, as much as anything. We're just kind of checking it out and seeing how the game is now. And hopefully, you know, by the time Stable comes out, I'll have a, a little bit better feel for things, and then we'll, you know, start a new season, of course, at that point, or start the, re the regular season, I guess. And... Uh, kind of know a little bit more about what we're going to do in terms of skills and, and uh, what the hell? oh it's a, oh man that scared me all right let's how much I got 36 arrows yet oh does that guy even see us he didn't even see us does he <laughs> let's pop him in the head get some free XP here I need to try and get headshots, otherwise it's going to take a, probably 10 arrows at least to kill this guy. Alright, that took, what, 6 arrows I think it was? And we got 412 XP, so that's not too bad. Speaking of which, how are we doing, uh, oh, I guess it's down here. So we're, well, it looks like we're maybe about a, a quarter of the way or so to the next level. I don't have any skill points right now, do we? Yeah, okay. Now that gave me a little bit of a fright. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's just keep moving kind of to the north here and just finish scouting out the rest of the town. I'm going to go ahead and stand up here since I don't see any Zeeks. Oh, no, there's one right there. Did you hear that? All right. Right, let's make some more arrows. Uh, no, arrow. There we go. What are we short? Oh, stone, yeah. Should we try and risk <clears throat> whacking the stone with that guy over there? Let's just see what happens. Yeah, 
I think we're far enough away from him that he can't really hear it. So yeah, we don't get uh, we don't get resources from the stone anymore, uh, other than stone itself, of course. But uh, we do now have, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, actual, you know, mineral deposits like the iron and the oil shale and that sort of thing. In fact, yesterday when we were in the desert on the first episode, I actually pointed to an oil shale rock and told you guys that was iron, but it was actually oil shale. Magnum Enforcer Volume 2. These $29 suits look good and help reduce incoming damage. Take 5% less damage when wearing a suit. Okay. So there's like all kinds of books now, and they come in volumes. And if you read all the books in a particular category, then you get a bonus at the end. So this is Volume 2 of the Magnum Enforcer uh, category. Plus we get a little XP. All right, cool. That's neat. All right, let's go ahead and we don't need the frames right at the moment, so let's get the axe out. Whoa, don't get that out. <laughs> and we'll harvest a little more wood and see if we can get another thing of honey out of one of these. So, yeah, just um, you know, just because of the the nature of playing on these settings, the game can be a little bit slow in the beginning. Uh, lots of sneaking around and stuff. Um, you know, it's just kind of the way it is, but. As we start to level up and gear up, you know, it'll get it'll get more exciting. I'm not gonna, you know, be hiding and sneaking away, you know, sneaking from the zombies all the time. We just need to do it early on. So, you know, just kind of bear with me on that. Hopefully, you guys aren't, you know, are, are staying engaged as much as possible. Um, it is, you know, it is intense. That's a thing. It's it is intense doing this, even though there's not a lot of action going on right at the moment. And we kind of want <laughs> we want to keep it that way. We don't want a lot of action right now. Okay, here's an iron stone here. We're going to grab that because then we can uh, scrap it and we can uh, make barbed wire uh, from the scrap. Oh my god, that's loud. Woo! Okay. Um, well, there's nobody like really close to us, except for I can't see on the other side of that tree. There's one way to fix that problem, huh? Oh, you know what? There's a Zeke right there, and the tree's probably going to attract the falling of the tree. will probably attract him. Whoops. Well, you know what we could do? If it does, we'll just kind of run down the road and get away from him. I just don't... <clears throat> I don't want that blind spot while we're trying to finish up the iron stone there, especially with how loud it is. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure glad the stone axe doesn't use as much stamina as it used to. No, it doesn't seem to. Maybe that's my uh, my ninja skills working for me here to keep me alive. <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, that did not attract him. Quite surprised, in fact. Okay, now we also have like an iron, you know, more iron right below the stones, too. What does this take to repair? Probably a repair kit, right? Yeah, I think almost everything requires a repair kit now. Which, I don't know, kind of doesn't make a lot of sense in some ways, because if you think about what goes into a repair kit... I gotta be careful. I'm trying to talk to you guys, but I gotta listen. Listen too. Make sure I don't get rushed here. Um, you know, it doesn't really make sense to use a repair kit on some sorts of things. It kind of does from the standpoint of 
you know, to repair something, you need tools. So I do get that part, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I guess we'll kind of doesn't really matter in the long run because that's the way the game is now. So we just got to make it work. Sure glad we found this pick, though. All right. Let's, um, how much did we get? 64? Let's scrap that whole entire stack. Oh, okay. that's going to give us 240. Very nice. Okay, let's make some more arrows. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the gunpowder. You know, I just don't think that's something we need right now, and the, and the trader's not going to buy it. So let's get rid of that. We will keep the bullet casings. I just don't want to throw those away. Okay, let's put a spear in place of our axe if we're not going to use the axe. And I want to move back more towards the um, the town. And kind of you know, let's get this little area uncovered, and then we'll cross over and get this little area uncovered. Maybe by the time. Well, it's actually already three fifteen, so it's getting close to daytime. The problem too with the game and you and we already see it happening is when you get closer to dawn it gets darker again is it like the moon's kind of going down now so yeah this part's gonna gonna be dark in the video guys sorry about that but uh, <laughs> it won't won't be too long it's it's already 320 now i mean it's it gets so dark i can't even see and no i'm not gonna adjust the gamma we're gonna play the game legit and that means when it gets dark it gets dark it's just all there is to it. Okay. Yeah, but it, like I said, it, it will only stay that way for a little bit. Oh, shit. And hopefully we will luck out and get, you know, get some night vision fairly soon. And hopefully that night vision will actually work. <laughs> He's coming right at me. He doesn't sense me. He's just coming at me. So let's go around him. Now there is there is a new breadcrumb trail system in the game. And I don't actually know exactly how it works. But it's, you know, from what I understand of it, <clears throat> if you um you know, if you make some noise or do something that would alert them, unless they're looking right at you, um you know, they'll they'll kind of come over to where you know you've been but then they won't necessarily come right to where you are got a spider oh no we don't want to mess with him no spiders please at first i thought that was a crawler and i was going to go try and kill him but then i realized nope that's a spider no bueno no bueno at all I mean, you know, you guys, for you guys, the screen's probably damn near pitch black, but it's almost pitch black for me, too. I mean, I can hardly see a damn thing right now. Nothing. Okay, which direction are we moving? Yeah, so we're going to kind of just go north, northeast-ish. And, uh... Get the rest of the, the city, the town uncovered here so we can see what all we have to work with, basically. But as soon as the as soon as it gets light, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking in some of these uh, smaller POIs and hope that they, are, that they aren't dungeons and see if we can find... I thought I heard something. Uh, see if we can find some... Uh, a cooking pot. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at this. Oh, it's morning. Okay, good. I'll take a look at this, you guys, uh, when I edit it and see if I can brighten it up a little bit. But the problem with Seven Days to Die, at least earlier versions of it, maybe it's better now, is that when you uh, when you turn the gamma up, it's it starts to get, like, really, you know, washed out looking and looks terrible. So, you know, I'll see what I can do. Okay, there's a fire station. That's not a bad POI to base on. It's pretty stout. Um, but that's something to keep in mind, too. 
particularly if we don't find how are we doing it on encumbrance just wondering if we should go back to the base first and drop a few things off well uh yeah so the fire station is not not a bad place to hang out if we decide to uh you know move a little bit closer to the to the water supply I wonder if we can take a peek inside this garage here without uh, waking the dead, literally. Is there uh, like a side door? Or do we have to break down the door? Make a bunch of noise doing it. Yeah, there is. That house is probably a dungeon. But listen, be really quiet. Ooh, look what's up there. Now, it's still possible that there could be a sleeper up there or up there. I don't think there's one up there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> working stiffs. Where's my axe? Okay, I will take both of those things. Hot damn, you guys. We got an iron axe, an iron shovel, and an iron pick. And it's only episode three. <laughs> That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Uh, we can get some resources from this stuff, too. Oh, more lockpicks. That's good. Yeah, those are nice finds. Another jar there. Um, let's see, we, yeah, okay, let's grab this shovel, and, uh, no, not that. I guess we have to break these with an axe. So we're getting plastic and paper. Do we break those, or do we take them apart with a wrench? I don't have a wrench with me. <clears throat> We're going to need wheels eventually for some kind of a vehicle. Okay, let's switch to this. So it looks like we're getting cobblestone and wood from this. Okay, and this is probably going to be cement. Oh, good XP for that, too. That's not bad. All right, cool. So this was definitely worth coming in and checking out. Don't see anything in there. Okay, cool. Um, So we're just a little bit encumbered, but not terribly so. Can we turn this into cloth? Let's do that. Oh, that's right. It only takes one cotton now for cloth, which is really nice. And then let's just make this a bandage. And uh, that puts us back in pretty decent shape there, encumbrance-wise. Empty cans can only be used for oil and sham. Not something we need to worry about right now. So let's scrap that, too. That frees up all of our encumbrance slots. So we're back, back in business if we have to jet, which we probably will. Okay, let's head on out of here. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the base because we have all this stuff. 
and put it away and then we'll proceed and we might go ahead and actually start with oh, shut up timer uh, we might actually start with our own our own house that we're on top of at the moment and see if we can uh, get it cleared out and find ourselves a cooking pot we have not uncovered any more water though but there's still area over here of course you know, in terms of just the water itself, there's not really any advantage to uncovering it over here because we're already, you know, far enough over that way. What are we uncovered with? Oh, feathers. Not anymore. Not anymore, man. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, we're out of time. So... That would be a pretty stout POI to get on the roof of, too, but I think there's probably, like, a big old sleeper horde on top of that roof. Uh, anyway, like I said, we're out of time. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my house, the, well, the house that we're currently at, drop this stuff off, <clears throat> and then in the next episode, we'll probably go ahead and actually try and loot that house and keep looking for a cooking pot. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget to uh, share out the video and leave comments. Those things do help the channel, and I do appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the next episode. We're going to start up right where we left off. Okay, bye-bye.